All right, welcome everybody. Um, I am going to be going on to uh, live on Facebook. Shoot, we're getting you set. Say hi, Chef Gino. Hello. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> See you. Welcome everybody. I am going to go live in our um, in our Facebook group. So let's see. I know people are starting to come in. Welcome everyone. All right, we're gonna go live in there too. I'm really happy to serve you well. Um, we're gonna be talking uh, today about accounting and budgeting best practices for restaurants. Um, it's just a really, really important thing for restaurants to be able to, to do well and get control of. It's usually something that you don't like to pay attention to. You like to have it all done, um, all, all done for you. All right. You like to have it done for you. You like to know your numbers. You like to have them in a timely manner um, so that you can take action on it. And so I'm going to show you how you can be looking at your books, interpreting a PL, understanding the balance sheet, and knowing that you are doing what it takes uh, in your restaurant to be successful. Okay. Um, and not just successful, but getting good reporting to give yourself a good report card for how you should be operating. OK, um, you know, running a restaurant is uh, full of all kinds of different expenses and there's so many variables to it that you must truly, truly understand uh, those principles. Right. And so um, one of those things is going to be understanding our break even point for a restaurant. What's our break even point look like? Some of you know what your break even point is only based on you know past experiences, right? What does my past experience tell me my break-even point should be? We're gonna be talking about uh, budgets, budgets so that we're pre-planning our profit um, and knowing what our prime cost should be and identifying prime cost and how we should be measuring prime cost, right? So that's gonna be a really important factor. Um, we're gonna be talking about belief um, we're going to be setting some amazing standards, belief, right? And so this belief is probably the biggest hurdle of everything. We have all these technical things that we do, but one of the big problems is y'all don't believe, can you help me move this over to the side so I'm not standing in front of it? So I'm going to go this way. Good. It's really important. I'm going from one meeting to another. I've, I've been teaching people all day. Um, I'm going to be giving you a chance to fully believe me. And, and, you know, obviously we sell stuff. We, um, we offer a products and we charge for our services. My goal though, is for whatever I charge for my services to get you 10 or 20 times or more than that back in direct cash to your, to your restaurant for the success of my business is fully dependent on how successful and how easy we make your life, right? And I want to make your life as easy as possible as a restaurant owner because it's already hard enough. You are the hardest working people um, in the world. Um, but sometimes um, we are too busy working on things and working hard on things that we shouldn't be. And so we're going to give you the focus to work on your business rather than in it um, while without giving up um, hospitality, without giving up, your um passion right we don't want to give up quality of product either we want to be able to put out our best possible product and that is a really really important thing so getting our belief right and then getting our mindset right about um putting ourselves first right so in budgets we got to plan for profits and we got to make profit an important thing um in what we do okay um so as we begin this talking about foundationally what it means 
to be a profitable restaurant, what we do, we have these three gears here, right? So we have this, this here's, or not a year, but here's, a, here's a, a portion of a pie. And I'm a terrible artist, so forgive me on this. But we have these three components to running a restaurant, right? And then we have this component that we have to take care of. And one of the components to running our restaurant is our employees, right? And having good staff, having people working, having um, having something that people can believe in and stand behind that they're proud to work for and all of that. That's a really, really important thing. These are supposed to be equal portions, but you know, I'm not the greatest artist in it. The other component to our business is our guests, right? Our guests, the people that are coming in, our communities, the people that we're serving in our communities. These are the people that are, um, that are the lifeblood of our business, right? Our, our guests, our guests coming in um, is so important to what we do, all right? Now, the last one that we all forget about is you, right? You, your investors, the owner. It's usually the last part of everything that you're thinking about, right? You put everybody first. You um, sacrifice payroll. You stress about making payroll. You stress if you're going to have enough money in the bank. You don't know your cash flow. You can't predict how much money you're going to have in your bank next week, next month, two months from now. And I want to give you a vision over your business with that. Okay. So in that vision um, is going to come, you know, this principle where we're going to be budgeting for that vision, right? We're going to be budgeting and we're going to be applying these principles to it. So what we have to do is flip the traditional accounting, accounting practices on our map up on their head, right? So traditional accounting, the traditional accounting method says that sales minus expenses equals my profit, right? That we put this, we have these sales. These are the. This is what we're left to live with, and our, and whatever's left over after this equation is what we have. This is our leftovers. Is how we look at it, right? And we want to flip that on its head. We want to have the correct approach, which says that sales minus profit equals expenses. Okay. And what that means is we are going to be planning out our expenses to help us help our restaurant serve our life, to give us the profit that we need to do to be successful, to make sure that we are controlling every dollar of revenue and making sure that every single dollar of revenue is flowing through down to our bottom line without sacrificing hospitality, without sacrificing quality of product to make sure that we're efficient. I was working with a client this morning where they're looking at and they're like, hey, we feel like we're pretty good on labor. In fact, they're running a really good labor. They were running an 18% labor cost, variable labor, right? That's pretty good in this day and age uh, to be running that sort of efficiency. That's, that's above average, right? The goal though is to get in at 16% because of their volumes, because of their mix to liquor and food and analyzing all of that, right? So we knew we could get them there. And so we went and analyzed where they're at. And when looking at it, what we found was uh, the kitchen manager was feeling like, hey, I'm I'm over, I, 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 I'm squeezing every bit of I can out of my labor. That's their initial feeling, right? And didn't believe that what we could do was possible. Well, and as we broke this down, and use a system to plan our expenses to make our restaurant deliver the life that we need and putting ourselves first, which seems selfish, but it's not. We have to be there to take care of our employees. I like to compare it to the uh, the airplane, um, uh, I almost said stewardess, the flight attendant that is giving the emergency preparedness before a flight. If you're with a small child, they tell you, put the mask on yourself first. Our gut reaction is to put the mask on the small child. Compare that, that to it's put the mask on our employees, put the mask on our community, put the mask on everybody else but ourselves, uh, if we're using that as an analogy, right? 
We need to put it on ourselves first so that we can take care of the child. We need to take care of ourselves first to make the profit that we need to live the life that will fulfill us and make us happy and give us the time to do the things we want to and give us the freedom that we wanted as restaurateurs when we first opened. We didn't open our restaurants to become slaves to them. And we need the freedom to be able to, to do that. And so we have to plan our expenses around, right? And so when we're doing this and analyzing the labor, what we found was we found little pockets of inefficiencies in there to plan our expenses. But unless we planned it, we couldn't go after it, right? And so we want to flip this on this edge. And we're going to do that with our budgeting, right? We're going to do that with our budgeting. And we're going to lay out exactly, exactly where we need to be um, with it. Um, to, so let me open up. Um, you know, I'll just do it off the top of my head. That's fine. So we have scenario A and scenario B, right? Because we're going to be talking about break even, right? So if we're going to plan, so I'm talking about break even before we get in the budget. So that's step one is talking about break even, okay? Um, and we also need to, to realize that we're going to define like where we're going with prime costs and how we're going to achieve it, right? So we want to step one in this and giving you a practical way to look at it is I want each and every single one of you to know what your break-even point is in your restaurant, right? And so we're going to break it down in a simple way. And part of my giveaway is going to be the software that you're going to get for free. If you stick around to the end, we'll watch. So everybody's at the end that you'll get for free that will calculate this for you automatically. So you won't need to know to do this math. Our software will do it for you. It's in there. Our software does many things from manager log to recipe costing cards to you know labor allotments, break even point, budgeting, accounting to develop to get your PL, reconciliations, um, bill pay, you name it, we have it all in the system. Apps for your employees. Um, automatic par levels, recipe costing cards, inventory, apps for inventory, apps for ordering your product. You're all in one solution for everything you need to run your restaurant. And there's so many different things to it. And some of the people that are, that, uh, that I work with had, a, had a, a revelation that it's like, I'm not giving them this one little magic pill that completely turns their restaurant around, but it's a whole bunch of little things that lead to you making 20% profit. And if you're not making 20% profit in your restaurant, you need to listen very closely to me today. Because I'm going to show you a couple steps to get there. Is it the whole picture? No, there's a whole bunch of things you have to do in your restaurant. But it's the beginning of the process to get you there. You can't get there without good reporting or knowing where you've been, right? So we got to know our break-even point to get to where we need to in our restaurant. And so in this scenario, we have scenario A, which is a restaurant that has 65% variable costs, right? And so variable costs are labor. Variable costs are credit card processing fees. Variable costs could be our paper supplies, our kitchen supplies and restaurant supplies. Those type, you know, the tinfoil we're buying. The more business we do, the more tinfoil we buy, right? The more business we do, the more portioning bags we will use, right? So there's some things will go up and down. There's things like utilities that go up and down with weather, but have nothing to do with how busy we are in the restaurant, right? Or we have our lease payment, which it's a fixed number every month. Our insurance payments are fixed numbers. The garbage picks up. There's lots of the cable bill. There's lots of things that are fixed costs in our business. And we have to understand the relationship between variable and fixed when knowing our break-even point, okay? The restaurant business is full of variable expenses. And it's really important that we know what they are and that we're able to dig in uh, to them, okay? So budgeting. Scenario B is gonna be somebody that's using my systems and lowers this variable expenses down. They're doing better on labor. They're negotiating credit card fees. They're doing, um, you know, they're improving their food costs, right? The more food I... The more sales I do, the more food I'll use, the more beer will go out in glasses, the more liquor I'll sell, all of those all of those processes and ingredients out, right? All of those things will add up to it. So we go, hey, here's our break-even point scenario. Our budgeting will tell you exactly where you're at on your variable costs. We'll look at your current books. If you have them, we'll just kind of start to, to look at your overall numbers and, and fill in the blanks where we can if you don't have any books at all. Okay, so in this scenario, and we look at it, and we got a we have a company that does twenty five thousand that has twenty five thousand dollars of fixed expenses, fixed, 
$25,000 of rent, $25,000 of insurance, of garbage pickup. In both cases, even if we improve variable costs, our fixed costs are out of our control. There is not a lot that we can do regarding our fixed costs, right? And so we have to plan them. Now, what we need to understand with this is our first goal in our business is to pay for all of our fixed expenses. We got to get our fixed expenses paid for, right? And we're going to use our variable expenses to generate revenue. And there's going to be something left over every single time. So if I'm running a restaurant that has a total of 65% variable expenses, what that means is for every dollar I generate, I'm going to have 35 cents left over. 35 cents are going to be left over, right? And so if I'm running the math on this, I'm going to do $25,000. Well, how many 35 cents does it take to, 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 to pay for $25,000 in fixed expenses in my restaurant, right? So $25,000 divided by 35 cents tells me that it's going to take $71,000. Four hundred and twenty-eight dollars and fifty-seven cents, right? In this scenario, that's how much money I have to do, or how many thirty-five cents I do. Seventy-one thousand four twenty-eight thirty-five cents to pay for twenty-five thousand dollars of fixed expenses. It's a lot of running around. That's a lot of business to do to pay for twenty-five thousand dollars of fixed expenses. That's the scenario for here, though. Okay, so I'm going to ask you to make sure that we're fully understanding variable expenses and fixed expenses. If we did $10,000 more, and if you want to comment in the chat, go ahead and put out a guess for me. Be brave for me. People don't like to be brave. They don't like to be wrong, especially restaurant owners. I found that out last night when I posted about my free group and my restaurant owner startup and growth group. I offered a free program for people to join, and a whole bunch of restaurant owners got pissed off about it, right? Um, and so if you're going to be pissed off about uh, being in a group where I give away a free training and I'm giving away a free training and accounting right now as I'm live in the group, then just leave the group. Get out. Though I can't help everyone. But I have a God-given right to bring my message to the masses. And if you don't want to hear about it, that's fine because I make restaurant owners rich and I'm offering free services in the group, not out there selling. If you like what I have, you can buy it, of course. But I'm giving free opening restaurant guides. I'm giving hiring guides. I'm giving away so much in there. That if you don't want to be in the group, get out. That's no problem. We don't need the haters out there. There's so many times restaurant owners, you're, but I also want to have grace, right? I want to have grace. I want to know... I want you to know that you're stressed out. I, 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 you know that I understand you're stressed out. I know it's hard to make payroll. I know it's hard to do these things. I know that there's fake consultants out there, the people that like to take advantage. But I'm giving away free services in there. Um, what do we have here? Um, restaurant owner startup. You want? He wants it. I love it. I love it, Angie. I appreciate it. The, the name of the group is Restaurant Owner Startup and Growth. Can you just put a link into the answer to the question there? Um, message it to me. I'll copy the link right to the Facebook group. Um, lots of people. I'm live in that group right now. There's 13,000 people in there. I'm giving away stuff in there all the time, right? Yeah. In Zambia. Oh, they, yeah. awesome. Awesome. Following from Zambia. That's awesome. So, um, so. One of the things for sure is if if you don't like something, then you're, nobody's forcing you to be in my group. And I have a responsibility to the restaurant industry. My systems and software work so well and have changed so many lives over the 20 years I've been in business. It would be selfish, selfish of me to stay quiet and not tell the world about it, right? These principles and these things that we teach, this is one little component of it. It's so important to your survival as a restaurant. And if you're a restaurant owner that doesn't want to be stressed out about making the next payroll, you have to plan for it. You can't just expect it to happen magically and say, hey, I'm going to make a good burger and everything else will just happen magically. You have to run a good business. You have to have purchase orders and budgets and schedule labor on purpose and recipe costing cards and you have to do inventory and you have to schedule and you have to you have to run your business on purpose and so i'm a little fired up about it because um i help people and i help change lives and if you don't believe me that's your problem right because i'm offering stuff for free to prove myself to you there is nobody out there in the market that is giving away as much as i am because i'm so confident in what i do 
my i when people are in my bit once they become a customer of restaurant systems pro the average is 11 years that means for anybody that i've had in my system for five years i have somebody in for 16 years we've been around since 2004 and we've changed so many lives i have um i have pictures one of my clients let me actually bring it up my clients let me let me bring up steve brown's picture Steve Brown, I'm getting off. I promise I'll get to this. If you know the answer, so I'm going to ask the question. I'm going to get back to it as I show this from my from one of my clients, Steve Brown, right? I'm going to bring this up. Okay, perfect. Here, I want to know what the profit, based on the information we have available, what's my profit on, if I break even at 71000 I have $0 profit, zero loss, $0 profit. What is my profit? For anybody that's brave enough to want to answer, I will not ridicule you. If you're wrong, that's no problem. I want you to be brave. Put yourself out there. What is the profit? Rachel's going to monitor Facebook. If you want to answer on Facebook, what is my profit on 81,428 in this scenario as we plan it? Okay. Now, everybody, everybody's like, oh, you should, like some guy told me that if you should call a realtor to learn about restaurants because they know marketing and they're not your competitor. I couldn't hear of a more stupid statement in my life than to hear that. They go to a realtor to learn how to run my restaurant. Give me a break. I didn't delete them because I wanted the people to see his stupidity, stupidity in there. 3,500. 3, Who was that? Albert. Albert is a badass. Albert is right. I'm going to let that, I'm going to let that focus. Come on, camera. There we go. You see that? That is my client, Steve Brown. That's his restaurant, Easy B Restaurants Mexicana, Asparza's restaurant group. That's a check to himself at the end of the year. He does about $6 million in sales. Um, this is after his $240,000 salary to himself. And he makes over $1.2 million in profit every year. And he wanted to send me a picture of that because he's made over a million dollars in profit with his salary included in that. But this year, he actually surpassed where he got to write himself for the first time in his life. I've worked with him since 2008. But that's what he got to write at the end of last year. He got to write himself that check for a million dollars out of his out of his operating account. That's pretty awesome, right? And I wanted to share that. So Albert says it's thirty five hundred, and Albert's right because if I do extra ten thousand dollars, even after my some of you think it, some of you thought it was ten thousand dollars. That's okay. It's not because even after a break even point, I am going to have. Beer in the glass, labor to deliver it. I still have credit card swipes. I still have restaurant supplies. I still have variable expenses even after break even point. And so what that's going to do is it's going to put that 35 cents towards profit instead of my fixed expenses. So my profit's $3,500. Now, here's the crazy thing. If I did 91428 my profit will shoot to $7,000. Now, here's the crazy thing about the restaurant industry. I make just as much money as I did from zero to $81,000 as I did from $81,000 to $91,000. Just, we made $3,500 from zero to $81,000. Then from 81 to 91, we made the same amount of money and doubled our profits. I need to get you to break even as fast as possible. As fast as possible. I need to put this in the chat. I need to do this to everyone, right? So here's the link to the group. There's lots of people in the group watching from the group right now. And I'm going to chat to everyone here in Zoom. And then obviously in the Facebook group, you don't need to put the link to the group in the Facebook yeah, group. Yeah. There we go. All right. So we're going to go here. So that is what we have. So my job is to get you down, get your variable expenses down, to help you control your food costs, to help you pre-plan your labor, to control every dollar of expenses with systems and processes, right? So as we go through this, in this scenario, I have a 45 cent. I have 45 cents left over, right? And so if I was to take my $25,000 and divided by how many 45 cents it's going to take. Well, it's going to be 55,555.56 is where my break-even point will go to based on this margin, okay? 
And if I, between that and 65,000, 555, 56, I will make $4,500 of profit, right? And this is where my clients start to get exponential profits. It's not exponential, but it is a hockey stick curve of profits. Because in this scenario, if my restaurant, let me do that. Um, if my restaurant was to do 91428 on um, on this on this scenario with a 45% gross margin, my profit will soar above $16,000, right? So in the same scenario, in this scenario one, I made $7,000. Scenario two, made $16,000. Where are you, though? Are you losing money? Do I need to lower my break-even point with the same fixed costs? From seventy one thousand to fifty five thousand, that's a good. That's a good. That difference is sixteen thousand dollars, right? Which is where my profit ends up increasing, right? And as we look at this, we need to understand. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let me finish this one thought, right? We need to understand that for every dollar that we're spending in that thirty five cent um, equation, if I did one dollar, one dollar divided by thirty five cents. It means it takes two dollars and eighty-five cents of revenue to pay for every dollar of fixed expense. Sometimes you think like, "Hey, if I just negotiate my insurance and I save a thousand dollars this month, I'm lowering my break-even point by a thousand dollars." Well, no. In this case, you would lower your break-even point by two thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars, right? That some of you, that's a whole day's worth of sales. Question from Facebook or, okay, what's the question? What is the average time to break even for your restaurants in your program? So I have restaurants that open and are breaking even in the first month that they operate because we do it on purpose. It changes for everybody. And it's really hard the first month of, to, to, to get to break even because, and everybody tells you, oh, it takes six months to a year. I saw somebody comment like, oh, don't open a restaurant unless you have six months of money in the bank. Now that's great to have that, but not everybody does. And not everybody can, can I drug myself out of poverty through the restaurant business. My family was living in trailers. We had no money. I got a job in a restaurant to work for my family. And I started dishwashing and became a chef and worked myself up through the industry. And the restaurant industry drug me and my family out of poverty, right? And it's, it's sometimes it's a low cost of entry to get in there. And so not everybody's going to have to have, um, you know, is going to have you know, uh, months and months of payroll in there. I have one client I work with. It was before he worked with me, but he was in New York City and the rent was $75,000 a month. And he just negotiated with landlord, give me one month to pay rent. Give me one month of free rent and I'll never miss a rent payment. And he had gone 15 years someone, from, since the first time I met him to pay his rent. I helped him increase his profits by millions, but he survived out of the gate. And he was an immigrant from another country and basically the landlord took a chance on him and he's never missed a rent payment in the place, right? So we got to understand this too. So one month, maybe you might use double the labor in the first month. And that makes it because as people come in and out, we're getting people trained. It's really difficult, new things. People get stressed out and quit like crazy. But after that, there is no reason you shouldn't be there. And here's the thing. If you are, to answer that question, if your lease is between six and 8%, does that person know? Is that that person? They can they share what their lease is? I want your lease to be between six and eight percent. If you can get your lease to six and eight percent, then we can get you profitable. Where I have the most difficult, in fact, there's somebody that's in my um, one of my free groups, and they started in September, and they're at twenty five thousand dollars a month rent, twenty five k in rent, over eighty thousand dollars in sales. I'm not sure what that is. And he and he was not making money. 25K divided by 80K. So he was at 31.25% uh, occupancy. Now, he didn't live there. He was able to negotiate with his landlord and get it to 17K, right? So 17 divided by 80. And so he got it down. It's still not where I want you here. And he got it negotiated down by showing it to 17K, right? So 17K rent got him to 21.25%, right? Now I'm telling you, if you're six to 8%, you'll make 15 to 20% profit, 
right? And so what we did is if let's say that we're at 8% and I get you to 15% profit, right? Well, if the landlord is getting 21%, this is going to be 13. I will still get you barely profitable. You're working for the landlord at that. And so we're negotiating and finding him a new spot, but he was hemorrhaging money because he was running a high prime cost, but we got him lowered to where he's making it now and he's not losing money. Right. And he is going to be profitable right? Within 60 days. And so that's quite amazing. And so don't listen to industry averages. Don't listen to what the world is telling you. Don't listen to what the world says is possible or not. Um, it's possible to be profitable right out of the gate with a restaurant if you have systems to know your targets. So many people open and they simply survive. They wake up every day. They look at the shelves and place an order. They write a schedule based on their gut based on and some of that they have more employees because they're not trained well so they throw more money at the problem and they're not profitable um any other questions on that and days to break even per month question so it's not days to break even it depends on your sales depending on the based on your variable cost and the 20 and the and the 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 it would be it's different for everybody i can't just answer that for you because if we're going to be profitable, like if you, I don't know how long it takes in that case, if you have $25,000 of fixed expenses, you may break even in 15 days if you're doing $140,000 a month, right? I don't, so th that's a question that I can't answer without your specific. I can answer it. I could answer it if you join the program, we do your budget and we're calculating yours. I could absolutely answer that for you and tell you exactly where you should be. Yeah, I want to get the break even point as soon as possible. Hopefully that makes sense based on the scenario. I don't know what your fixed costs are. I don't know where you're at in variable. So I can't tell you what it is days to break even. We know when we know once we know that, I can tell you that too. So um as far as a standard goes, I want you breaking even by the 22nd of the month, 20th, 22nd of the month, right? That's going to get you there uh, sooner than later, right? Um, but it's different for everyone, okay? But if I'm just going to throw one out there that's a guess, that's fine. But it really has to do with sales, right? And how much sales are we doing? And it has to do with variable expenses versus fixed expenses when it comes down to that. Now, you have to believe this possible. If you're here and you're saying, this guy's full of shit and doesn't know what he's talking about, then you should leave because whether you think you can or you can't, you're right, Right. And so sorry for, you know, I know I just cussed on Facebook and all that, but um, I'm passionate about it. I'm not normally a guy that cusses. I only use it when appropriate. And that was absolutely appropriate right there, because if you don't believe me, um, you're there. So here's here's a, a quick story for you. Right. There is a um, the, the story of the four minute mile. It's not a story. It's an actual thing that happened. But Henry Ford said, if you can do a thing, uh, if you think you can do a thing or you think you can't, you're right. Okay. And so I'm a firm believer that you got, you have got to believe that it's possible for you. Now, back in 1950, before 1954, it was believed to be impossible for a human to run the four minute mile. It was believed to be impossible. Right. And on May 6, 1954, Roger Bannister broke the tape and was the first human in history to break the four minute mile. And it was believed to be impossible. OK, so from the beginning of human existence all the way to May 6, 1954, Britain's Roger Bannister did what the world perceived to be impossible. Going to the moon. There's so many things in long human history, just just flying in a plane across across uh, uh, the entire country in one day, not even one day, five hours right from from coast to coast. And to be there, wake up one morning on one coast and go to sleep the next. There's so many human feats that are so amazing that just believing that you get your restaurant profitable, when you see profitable restaurants everywhere, you see rich restaurant owners everywhere, it is possible for you and you have to believe it. And the the, the kicker here is, is and the, the best part of the story is not Roger Bannister doing the impossible. It is not Roger Bannister doing the impossible. The kicker is John Landy did it 56 days later, the second person to do it did it. And what it took was the belief that it was possible. And John Landy even broke Roger Bannister's letter. So from the beginning of time to 1954, it took to do it the first time. And it took only 56 days for it to happen again. So you have to believe it's possible. I have a question. Mm -hmm. It says, 
I'm in LA. How did you find a lease that is low relative to rent? Money. So the person that I was talking to that had the twenty five thousand rent, they're San Diego. It's just a reality of of being in California. Um, that's really, really difficult. My brother does commercial real estate in there too. But what you want to do is look at that lease and know how much am I actually working for me or how much am I becoming a slave to my landlord, right? So what's his lease? Um, is he saying his lease? I don't. I just said how or how do you just increase sales and make it work? Okay, so marketing, better systems, better training, lowering those variable expenses. Um Restaurant Systems Pro does marketing and we help people with it and help them get starting. It's not something we market or put out there because I can't, if I help people, if I, if I looked at, you know, Hey, I have 35 cents left over. Right. And then I do something like, Hey, I run a, a coupon where it's 25% off. And now I have somebody that's running only 10 cents to pay for fixed expenses. Now in that case of the $25,000, I have to do $250,000 to break even. If I'm to start discounting and couponing to bring to do that. Now, there's a way to do it to where you're bringing only new customers in with it. But if you have to be responsible with marketing, you have to be responsible with getting your branding out there and not doing it through just discounting and just disc being the, the clip coupon clipper for the, the next. Um, uh, what is it? What is it where you wait to uh, the dry cleaner? Right. People don't wait to go to the dry cleaner until they have the coupon that the dry cleaner always puts out. Right. So you have to understand this. And if I have $25,000 of fixed expenses and I start couponing everything, then I only have 10 cents left over um, on that on a 25% discount, right? And I will have to do $250,000 to break even on that. And so you can really hurt your business no matter what the ratio is, even if it's 25% of people that are getting it. Now, what do I got to do? Instead of doing 71,000, now my break even is 100,000. Who cares if I'm doing more sales? I need to be more profitable. Right. And all the marketing companies out there, they're selling you um, a false promise that if I grow my sales, I'll be more profitable. Get your operations in order first and then market to grow your sales. It's a bottom line efficiency, a top line mentality with a bottom line efficiency, meaning top line mentality. I'm going to grow my sales on top with good customer service, good, good, a good, um, a good product. Right. That people want to come back for. And with good operations where we're delivering to people, okay, and delivering what we promise, okay, and then that's that's where we go from there. So fix your up. Your, it's it's crazy how much you can drop to your bottom line. Um, I just showed you that scenario for the break even point on how much you can truly um, affect it too. Now, for those of you, I do have another giveaway for those of you that want a P and L the correct way, a profit and loss statement. Now, um, did I get that question? I think I did. Um, too. Like he's asking me where to find a cheap lease in California. That's not the, that's not, the question is wrong. It's how can I be as profitable as I can on the sales I can? Because there isn't a lot of cheap property out in Los Angeles, right? And so I have to be more efficient with my operation, better operator. If I'm paying the landlord 15%, I have to, I have no choice but to get to a 55 prime cost, which what is prime cost, right? Prime cost is total cost of goods sold, total cost of goods sold, plus total labor, including taxes, including taxes, benefits, and if you're a really good operator, insurance for your employees. Okay, that's prime cost. This is where we're at. Right. And I've discovered that if you do more than 850 K, if you do more than 850 K, then you can be at a 55, a 55 percent prime cost. 55 percent is where I want you. 55 percent prime cost. Total cost of goods sold, total labor. If you're at a 55 percent prime cost, then your profit could be anywhere between 15 and 20 percent. This generates wealth in restaurants. This number. Most of you are operating at three to 5%. And if your immediate thought is that it's impossible, I want you to remember the story of the four minute mile. And also maybe look at the hundreds of people I've helped to get to here as proof of that, okay? Because I know there's a lot of haters in here and that's okay because I'm gonna still be here for the people that need to hear the message, okay? So we go through this. If I have high rent, right? If I want your rent to be, remember rent six to 8%, Right, six to eight percent for rent is where we need to be in budgeting. 
right? If I can't accomplish that, let's say I'm at 15% rent, right? So I'm 7% higher, right? Just, you're gonna have to subtract seven. So I'm gonna be at eight to 13% profit. And I know that's my reality because I live in Los Angeles and my rent is that high. And then I'm gonna get my operations in order. And I'm gonna work my ass off to get my sales up. I can't tell you how many people I've worked with that have doubled their sales over five years, doubled over five years. It's a little bit here, a little bit there. It's 1%, 1% better every day for 365 days is a 3,800% improvement. And so many times we focus on getting that big number. We just need to be a little bit better every day and it will lead to big results. And that's where, that's where my clients are making because 3,800, I just want a 200% improvement, a 20% improvement, a 30% improvement. You're talking, if I'm 1% better every day, I'll be 3,800% improvement. That's compounding interest in, in fact, right? Every single day for 365 days, I will improve 3,800%, right? So what if we're off by 3,000% and we're just less than 1% better every day? The key is to be better every single day to get to where we need to go. I have a client I worked with. We started with them in 2008. They were $4 million. They cracked 10 million in 2022. This would took them 14 years to grow $6 million. But they did a little bit every year, every year, every year, every year they grew. They got better and better and better. Yes, prices have gone up. They didn't go up 150%, which is how much more 10 million is than 4 million. It's 150% more, okay? Prices, inflation is not 150%. They have grown their customer account. They have delivered on experience and made people great. Okay, so we have to define prime costs where we're at. I want every single person here to question where they're at in prime costs. And if you're not at 55 and doing more than 850, then you have problems. If you're doing more than 3 million a year, um, and here's also how I know this. Do I have my, um, where's my, Where's my really good book here that, I, that we love, right? We've taught this for, for years here at Restaurant Systems Road that we want a 55 prime cost. It was backed up for me as I read this really good, interesting book called The Interpretation of Financial Statements by Warren Buffett, okay? It's actually written by Warren Buffett's daughter and somebody else there um, too, but it's based on Warren Buffett's analysis of the financial statement. And one of the things the book was talking about in here is what is Warren Buffett looking for in a company that Warren Buffett would want to invest in, right? The best investor in the history of mankind, right? So um, Berkshire Hathaway is like the, the place, right? In fact, they're so big now, they're only looking for giant deals because it's really hard to move the needle on their billions of dollars, right? So if they're going to invest in a company, they're looking for a 45% gross margin in a company, right? And if a company has a 45% gross margin, that's a company that they want to invest in, right? Huh, what's a 45% gross margin on a 55 prime cost, right? It's exactly that. A 55 prime cost gets you a 45% gross margin. That's what generates wealth, gross margin. And we need to get you there to not just survive, to know that you have money in your bank accounts, to know that you can make payroll, to not have to worry about holding a check back so it won't cash. Uh, also, if you're multiple restaurants, enterprise, that have control over them. How do I delegate spending to three or four different restaurants and make sure that each kitchen manager in the three or four different restaurants is spending the right amount of money and running the right numbers? So many of you open, you get to multiple restaurants and you you fail at the multiple restaurants because you're just trying to duplicate yourself. There's only so many hours in the day and you have to have systems and processes in place for people to execute, okay? All right, as we measure, I want to talk about, can I get the calendar? Mm -hmm. When we measure, we got to get our income statement. Just have, uh, you have, okay, it's right there. Okay, just, just thank you. I'm gonna run it thank you. We have our income statement, right? Or called profit and loss. Right, and this our profit loss or our PL. This is like a movie as we look at our report, right? And then we have our balance sheet, balance sheet, right? And this is a picture, right? Our PL, our profit loss, is, is, is everything that's happening in our store. We have a truck pull up. 
sales come in, the truck drops off product and leaves and pulls away. A few more days later, another truck comes and drops off product. Employees are coming in and clocking in and clocking out. We're pay we're using electricity every day. It's a movie of uh, of a between a date range, right? A balance sheet is a picture in time of where our company is standing. It's our it's our assets and liabilities, right? It's our assets and liabilities. Right, what we own versus what we owe, right? And we have to understand both of them uh, to run a good uh, restaurant. Now, our PL is going to be a really good report card on where we stand, right? Our balance sheet is going to make sure that we're accounting for everything right. So you're going to find things like mistakes that happen in accounting, right? Some of you have these chart of accounts. And in fact, um, I'm going to show you a mistake in a, in a chart of account. So share my screen. I'm, I'm gonna protect the innocent here. And I'm gonna pull this up and show you guys some mistakes that I don't want you making in your store. I'm protecting the innocent here. Okay. So we pull this up and we're looking at chart of accounts here. Their sales are just however they're coming in. They're recording recording them as DoorDash, delivery charges. Here's the different <coughs> sales that are coming in, right? Then they tried to get it right where they're, where they're tracking a, a, um, a revenue center that's food, bottle beer, liquor. These are right, but then they're mixing in with like other types of things. So we have rebates coming in from different vendors. We have, um, finally, they just gave up and just started recording credit card deposits as sales, right? Credit cards, the, those are, those are when, we, when we're bringing in credit cards, that, that lives on our balance sheet, but it balances with where we're generating sales, right? Then we look at the, the cost, the, and this is very typical. If I'm looking at the cost of goods sold here um, on the right, that they have baked goods, canned goods, dairy, dessert, food, food purchases reimbursed, frozen foods, meat, poultry, produce, all these different categories. Right, and on our PL and on our chart of accounts, and for those interested in a chart of accounts, I will send you a proper chart of accounts for a restaurant if you request it. So comment in the chat on Facebook chart of accounts if you want it sent to you. We'll message it to you. If you want chart of accounts, uh, comment on the Zoom chat as well, and we'll send you the chart of accounts. Okay, um, let me know if you want it. I'll just give it to you. Funny how that works. We're here to serve you. Okay, and there'll probably be people. They get mad at me about it, but that's okay. I'm still going to give it away. All right. So when looking at the food purchases here, we have baked goods, canned goods, all these things, right? The problem with this is if I look at dairy, right? If I have a if I have a plate of chicken wings, right? It has dairy on it. I have the blue cheese dressing, let's say, that goes on it. It also has produce, it has carrots and celery, and it also has poultry, right? So this one plate of food has poultry. It has dry goods for the spices and the Frank's Red Hot sauce that's been made to go on it, right? It has dairy for the dressing, or maybe we mix butter into our Frank's Red Hot to, to, make, to make it more silky, right? There's, there's all these other ingredients, and it doesn't tell me how I'm operating. I'm not getting a good report card for how I'm operating, and I need to be able to operate in a way that lets me know where I'm at. And so if I'm going to show you like what a, um, what it could look like, let me just log in the restaurant systems pro here, uh, log in Move this over here too. So if I'm going to go, um, uh, even in this exact restaurant, we have it all fixed up and it's, I've only been working with them for like 20 days.
all right? Only working for them like 20 days. I can go to accounting. I can go to profit and loss. And we can see how it's only 20 days. We don't even have a full cycle in here. I'm going to switch filter by um, month, and I'm going to choose just October. And so here we're looking at this in real time. And we can see here that in their chart of accounts, we have food sales, liquor sales, draft beer, wine. We have all of these items. And then we have corresponding costs to go with it, right? So I have food costs to food sales, liquor costs to liquor sales. Now they're just, they're only 20 days in. So they're finishing getting up their inventory set up and all that. And we'll do an adjustment for inventories and get all that in there properly. But just a few days in, we have all of their expenses laid out and we can click and go, oh, paper supplies. Let me click on that. Where are my paper supplies coming from? Oh, from these vendors on these days, right? 10, seven, that was here. And then we have the coding that's showing it. And then we have not only the coding, but when we're looking at all these things and we look at this, I don't know, the Cisco invoice on 10, seven. Um, and I go here, invoice log. I can go and look even deeper on this invoice log. Here's my 10, seven invoice from Cisco. Um, here's the Cisco invoice. Not only am I looking at my accounting code, but then I click this back to order and we're tracking every single item on here. So when we do this, it's not, it's not magic. It's on purpose and it's every detail that's here. We're even tracking chicken wings. How many we bought, right? They bought one case, right? From everything, every single item that they bought, is tracked on here, okay? And then we compare that to our POS system. We integrate with 13 or 14 different POS systems, right? Where we're pulling the data from the POS system and we can compare each and every single one of these items to what we should have sold according to our POS system. We know how many calamaris we sold in our POS system. And then know ideally, according to our recipe costing card, what we should have sold compared to that. And we can make magic happen and we can change our P&L to, to to go back to our, uh, oops, stop share. To go back to our, um, to deliver for our best life, right? There's a question there, um, uh, Rachel? Okay, perfect. Um, so we have that here, okay? So we're gonna run through all this stuff. The other part of it is when I budget, right? If I'm budgeting for October, right? Think about it a second. Some of you have looked at your PL and you go, hmm. I'm looking at my PL and I go, oh, you know why? You know why I'm over budget on my PL? You know why I'm not profitable? There was three payrolls this month. So that's why I'm not profitable. And you excuse it away. Right. And the problem with that is, and, and where it is with the three payrolls is twice a month, twice a month, you have, or twice, two months out of a year, you have three payrolls. Two months out of the year, you have three payrolls when you're bi-weekly payroll. If you're weekly payroll, four months out of the year, you have five payrolls in it. And you just excuse it away. as like, oh, that's not right. I'm going to do it. So what we need to do when we do a budget, we're going to plan October, right? And we'll say, oh, I'm going to do $100,000 in October. And I'm going to run, I don't know, 25% labor, 25%. Love my handwriting, right? Which means I'm going to spend $25,000 on labor in the month of October, right? I have this budget, right? But that's my budget for October. And when we look at this, we're going to go, well, this is based on October 1st to October 31st. And then you guys do your books and I'm either, it's a month where there's two payrolls, which means I'm only looking at 28 days. And it looks something like this. Rachel, good job on this. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, it's not as good, but it works. Okay. So <laughs> still good job, Rachel. I appreciate you. All right. We're looking at October, right? But let's say we're bi-weekly payroll. Most of you, I'd say 80% of you are bi-weekly. A few of you are semi-monthly, which makes all of this a lot easier. It's the first of the 15th, 16th of the end of the month payroll periods, right? A lot of you are weekly. Most of you are bi-weekly payroll, okay? And I don't want you to have to change your books to accommodate, right? And so what we do is we go, okay, I'm looking at this. This is the first of October up here. 
Interesting calendar. Um, we have the first of October up here. And and this is Monday, right? Monday or Sunday, Monday sorry. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, um, like that. That's how our calendar looks, right? So the first of October was a Saturday. Okay. Now, when we're looking at this, what happens is let's say we had a payroll that ended on October 2nd. Sunday, October 2nd, our payroll ended, right? This was the end of our payroll period. And then what you do is you run payroll and you pay it out on the 7th of, of October, right? The reality of this payroll, it's being recorded on the 7th of October, but the reality is this payroll is the 19th, Monday the 19th to the 2nd of October. So there's only two days of October in this, right? This number is no good. Then payroll happens again the 3rd to the 16th, and we have another payroll on the 21st. So what that means is you have two payrolls recorded in October, but the but you're and you're comparing it to sales that's the first to the 31st, okay? But the really it's the 19th payroll to the 16th of October. So the 19th of September, this is how messed up your books are. The 19th of September to the 16th of October compared to the first to the 31st sales wise, because your sales are all in there by day. Your restaurant business, right? And so it's accrual accounting and we have to accrual, accrue payroll. And so the proper way to do it, if you're in QuickBooks, which we integrate with QuickBooks, we can take our, our, our data from Restaurant Systems Pro and push it into QuickBooks, much easier just to stay in our system. But if you're transitioning or whatever, that's fine. What you do is you make a general journal entry right away. And what you do on this is in our system, we know the hours. We're pulling data over from, from your POS system. We know exactly the payroll between the 19th and the, and the, and the 30th of September. And we do a general journal entry that pushes that payroll back here. And so here is the 19th to the 30th. We'll do an entry to correct it. So now this payroll is only showing the 1st and 2nd of October because we've done a general journal entry to do it back. On our system, on the 1st, it already knows that stuff and it automatically does the entry back. Okay, without you doing anything, you just put your stuff in the system and it will do it for you, right? Then the payroll on the 21st, this one's good. It's the 3rd to the 16th, right? But then we have another payroll that happens on November 4th, right? And that November 4th payroll happens to end on the 30th, right, of October. So that's easy. We can take the entire payroll and move it to October. That's an easy general journal entry. I mean, I just take the entire payroll because all of this payroll on the 4th of November belongs in October. But now I have a problem. Now I have to wait all the way. Some of you wait all the way till the 18th and another this this 31st of of October to the 13th of November, and then we record on the 18th. And you're waiting all this time and your bookkeepers aren't getting your books and you don't have it. We know this it, it, because it's not just a accounting system, it's a restaurant management system. We already know the answer on the 1st of November of what our labor was between the 17th and 31st. We already know the answer to that. And so we make that accrual. So you can get your books on the first of the month. That is life-changing for a lot of you. Many of you don't even haven't even seen books for the entire year and you're six months behind. I've created this because of our own problems in doing accounting for restaurants. Where we're doing it in QuickBooks for people, because we do accounting for you and we and, and there's you know our own employee troubles and all that. And so I'm saying I am sick of having to wait on QuickBooks to get my books out. And so we've for the last 18 months, we've been programming the accounting software to have it in there. Okay. And so I'm excited to be able to, to launch it and bring it to market, right? Um, as we go through accounting, we, we now, and to have, truly have October 1st to October 31st labor compared to those sales will truly give you a real report card for the first time in your restaurant lives. I'm going to guess for everybody here. 
um, that nobody is doing this. Nobody is doing this. You don't know to do it. But there's a reason why I get people 20% profit is they get real report cards on how they're operating and we can do something about it. And we can affect change before the clock ticks. And if you don't have good reporting, 20% profit is not going to be possible for you, especially if you're waiting for three months for your bookkeeper to get you your books back, right? So it's a huge problem for the restaurant industry that we are changing in a big way, right? So don't call a realtor about your restaurant. I hope he's listening. Comment if you are. All right, here we go. The next thing, inventories. I don't want you to hate to have to do inventories. And we have to do inventories. Inventories are a accounting calculation that's necessary for accrual accounting. Now, what's the difference between accrual and cash accounting? Right? So there's accrual accounting and cash accounting. A lot of your bookkeepers are lazy and they do cash right? And your CPAs are lazy. And so they file you as they do it as by law, a restaurant has, if you hold an inventory, you have to do accrual accounting. But what your CPA does is they do a little filing that says, Hey, they're doing cash accounting and they allow you to do it if you're under a certain amount, right? There's another question that's coming up. Okay. Accrual and Rachel's got it. Perfect. Thank you, Rachel. We have the cash accounting um, in there. Cash accounting is you accru you recognize the expense when the money leaves your bank account. So I recognize the expense when I pay Cisco, right? I recognize the expense when the money comes in and hits my bank account, which sometimes is two or three days later. So I know Toast has been having problems where it's like even further out with it too. We integrate with Toast. That's fine. Um, I don't want to talk bad about Toast, but it's a truth for all, all POS systems, right? So- Accrual means that you recognize the expense when the Cisco truck pulls up, not when you pay the Cisco bill, right? So the correct way is that when that product shows up to my back door, that's when the expense occurs for me to be have real accurate cost of goods sold, right? But now we have to take into account inventory, right? So let's look at a period, a Monday through a Sunday, right? Inventory is so important. If somebody, it costs $10,000 a month to have me calculate for So if, it, if, the, if me having a $399 software piss people off, the fact that people pay me $10,000 a month to consult in their restaurant is going to really anger some people out there, out there. So Monday to Sunday, right? If I go to do consult with you and you don't want to do inventory, I will get on a plane and leave. I will not work with you. Okay. Now I have people in my software where we're convincing them and trying to get it. But, but if I'm supposed to walk into your restaurant and get you results and you say you don't want to do inventory, then I can't get you results. I can't do it. And so my goal for you is to make inventory as easy as possible so that you can execute and make inventory so that your employees don't hate you for making them do it. Okay. So we want to make it with apps and drag and drop and having the right thing and shelf to sheet. It's to make inventory as easy as possible to have batch recipes that let us know exactly what that soup that we made is how much it costs it and on our shelf. Right. Now here's the cal here's the accounting calculation for inventory. It's beginning inventory plus purchases minus ending inventory. That's the equation. Equals my cost of goods sold, right? Now, I don't like to call it cost of goods sold. I like to call it use because this equation tells me what I tells me what I've used. I hope I sold it, but I don't like calling it cost of goods sold because hoping and wishing doesn't get us anywhere. We have to take action and do it. It's what we actually use is what matters. Okay? So in what we use, we got to use inventory, right? So if I'm going to break this down, our system gives you your usage and products. Remember the, in, the invoice I showed you where it showed all the products coming in? Well, guess what? If we inventory those products, and then we're showing on every invoice those products coming into our store through accrual accounting for it, then we will know our real use in real time, okay? Or at least after our inventory is taken. So on Monday morning, we have a beginning inventory. We have all this food on our shelves, right? And let's say we have 12 bottles of wine. 12 bottles of wine, 
if we break it down into a small one item thing to, to see how this works, right? We have a beginning inventory. I'm running too small, right? Beginning inventory, 12 bottles of wine, 12 bottles of wine. On Monday morning, Monday, on Monday morning, we have 12 bottles sitting there on our shelves. We haven't, we didn't buy it right now. It's sitting there from last week, right? So we have 12 bottles that's there in our beginning inventory. Then the week goes on and we purchase two cases of wine. So now we've had, we have 24 bottles that have come in, right? And we do this with dollars and with items. It's the same equation, same usage. How many dollars of product have you used? What is the value of these 12 bottles? What is the value of these 24 bottles, right? It could be a $100 uh, case is what it is. So I bought $200. So beginning inventory, $100 plus uh, purchase is right. I have three hundred dollars on my shelf, or total available, or, or three hundred available. Total available is thirty six bottles. Everything that was on my shelf to start, plus everything that I purchased, right? Really, really important. Okay. Then I get to Sunday, the end of the week, and I count. So I get to the end of the week, ending inventory. And I count that I have 30 bottles on my shelf, okay? So if I go through the equation, beginning inventory, beginning plus purchases minus endings equals use, okay? So beginning 12 plus purchases, I, I added 12, 24 to my, my shelf, 36 is available for me. I get to Sunday and I did not sell 30 bottles. I didn't, they're still sitting there on my shelf. It's an asset on my balance sheet, right? So I subtract the 30. I used six bottles of wine. And now that's the number I can compare to my POS system to see what I sold, right? So if you don't have inventory, I can't compare this number to my POS system because a lot of you are just going off purchases to calculate cost of goods sold. And my purchases are 24 bottles or $200, right? So if I take that $100, the value of the bottle, 100 divided by 12, it's $8.33 a bottle uh, times six. It's 50, oh, it's half of a case, $50, right? Sorry, $50. I have $50 of usage. I use $50 of product, right? But here I purchased $200 of product. And a lot of you are just doing purchases divided by sales. And that's how you're coming up with your cost of goods sold. It's dead ass wrong. And it's not okay. Okay. So you have to be doing inventory in there. And I know you hate it and you don't want to do it. And there's other consultants out there that say you don't have to be doing inventory to be successful. Well, guess what you do? And I'm sorry to say it. So we're going to make it as easy as possible and make it to where your employees don't hate you in doing an inventory. And we got to get this right, both in dollars and in items, because now I can take the six bottles that I actually used and compare that to my POS system. And any variances, let me know what was stolen over portion. And I can go attack that with clarity and precision and get to my 20% profit. I never said it was easy. I said you can do it. We got another question here. She just said you have to do inventory. Yes. Thank you. I love yeah. it. I love it. No, I, I got the, I got the, she said, who's she? Angie. Angie. Thank you, Angie. You have to do inventory. I love it. Um, if you want to be successful and so many restaurants are out there crying in their beer because they're not successful, but they say, I don't want to do inventory. I don't want to schedule labor. You don't understand. I'm different. Well, I have the formula for you to be uh, for you to be successful. And this is just one part of that. And part of it is making inventory easier. It's making the hard things easier. Some of these things that you have to do in your restaurant, it's not a revelation to you. You've heard it somewhere along the line. We just help you tie everything together and help you execute and do it right. Okay. Now, if I'm doing inventory, I told you, I don't want you to make me hate. You don't want, you don't want, let me see, let me get my calendar. Where's my calendar? I'm recycled. All right. Here's my calendar that Rachel did for me. Okay. If I'm counting inventory every Sunday, right? And I look at that. Well, Sunday is the 30th. 
how happy is your, but we need to have an end of month inventory to get an accurate cost of goods sold for our monthly books. And if we're doing a cruel accounting, some of so one way to get around it is to go to a 13, four, um, four week periods in a year instead of monthly, right? <clears throat> then our inventory every Sunday fits nicely in that or at the end of our work week, right? So Monday to Sunday, I have four weeks in there, I have the Monday, the first of, uh, of that week's, and then the, it ends on the Sunday. And I have an inventory at the beginning and end of this movie or this period for my, for my, um, <clears throat> for my uh, P&L, right? Now, I just told you I don't want my, your employees to hate me. So it would suck if I have to stay on monthly accounting because if I am, am doing four-week periods to calculate cost of goods sold and that bi-weekly payroll and it fits nicely in there, but the rest of my bills are monthly. And now I got to accrue and divide my rent payment that's 12 times a year into 13 times. And that's a lot of work. So sometimes people do 12, uh, 4, 4, 5 where they do these 12 periods that are four week, four week, five week. That's another way to do it, but it's easier. You're most of you are used to being on monthly accounting and just having your payroll accruals be wrong and, and looking at them there, but you're used to looking at it monthly. And so a way that we can keep you on monthly accounting is to adjust and make sure we have it. But I don't want you to have to take inventory on this Sunday, the 30th, and then go, Oh, Hey, Hey staff, we need to have inventory for the 31st also. So we're going to take inventory two days in a row. They will want to kill you. And it's hard enough hiring people, right? And so I'm going to share why this is so important with you all, okay? So I have, let me zoom in a little bit here, make this bigger here, all right? So in our software, I'm showing you on a spreadsheet because I can manipulate, our software does this automatically. And I like to share this. This was a few years ago. Um, with a client I worked with. And uh, what happened was, is their bookkeeper said they had it all figured out. I know, and they're doing and grabbing inventory, okay? And what happened was, is that Thursday, they had a big July 4th weekend. And if you look at these sales, this is the, um, this is the inventory count that, um, that we had from the, from the beginning of the week. So they took an inventory on Sunday, July 3rd. Okay, after a very busy July 4th weekend. Uh, and it was and it was like, you know, the first, second, and third, they did like 200. Well, let me see. It actually tells me the sales here. Between the first and third, they did, excuse me, $164,000 in sales in three days. That's pretty busy. Okay, three days, $164,000. Um, and it was exaggerated because what happened was the at the end of the month, the... Uh, the bookkeeper just grabbed the closest inventory to the end of the month because they didn't do the, the proper calculation right. And I'm looking at this and they made their numbers all messed up because they took the July 3rd inventory. Well, guess what would happen? What if, if, if Friday the 1st, uh, or, or excuse me, um, so Thursday's the 1st, right? Thursday's when the alcohol deliveries came in. Can, can anybody tell me what an alcohol delivery would look like if you're going to do $160,000 in three days? It's going to be pretty big, isn't it? Isn't the inventory going to be huge? And if you do $160,000 between Thursday and Sunday, don't you think you would have depleted that inventory a ton, right? You would have, you would have used a ton of that inventory, up. but yet the bookkeeper used the Sunday, July 3rd inventory. And that inventory was massively different. So it was June 30th was that Thursday, right? So right, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then Sunday was the third, right? So June 30th is what they put in for the ending inventory. And they use the July 3rd ending inventory. And so what we do is we help you. So if we have this, this was their usage rate. This was their NA beverage, liquor, beer, all of that. Their estimated usage of that, we calculate, right? And so what we do is we go backwards. And what we do is if I know that I'm going backwards three days, and I knew that these were the sales I did over that three days, this is estimated how much product I would have used over those three days based on their cost of goods sold targets, right? Then their purchases, these were more, their purchases had already happened before that. That's a little bit of purchases, but any purchases that happened, we would subtract. So we would add back anything we used in those three days and subtract anything that we came in on a truck after that June 30th inventory. And what we come is an estimated end of month inventory. And if you look this, if I add all this up, it's $18,000, right? And so the client's cost of goods sold was $18,000 just because their bookkeeper didn't understand inventory and what they were doing. 
and how busy with now i like to use this example because it's kind of exaggerated um but their books were off eighteen thousand dollars because they weren't calculating right because if my ending inventory is eighteen thousand dollars lower i just went over usage with you right if if my if my inventory would have been cal i said 30 bottles on that thing right but if i falsely recorded that it was 15 bottles then it would have said that I used 15 bottles that I didn't use, right? Because there was all, and so that's what happens in this scenario. Our software will take care of this for you automatically so your employees will not hate you, all right? So what I have is November 1st. It's coming up, um, when, when's November 1st? Is it Tuesday? Tuesday, Tuesday is going to be day one of this, right? So I want you to raise your hand. I want you to, in, in, the, in the chat, say, um, um, say 60 days, right? So on Facebook, say 60 days. On the chat, say 60 days. And we're going to invite you. So people don't believe me. And I'm getting upset about it all, but I'm actually not upset. I've been dealing with it for 20 years that we do incredible things for restaurants and people don't believe me. And so what I found is, is as I've calculated what, what the lifetime value of and, and the lifetime length that somebody's been with me and I calculated that at 11 years and that's pretty impressive because we didn't open until 2003 right and so if the average is 11 years it tells me it tells me and it should tell you that what we do works because why would somebody pay me every month for an average of 11 years why right and people don't believe it but when people that are end up making going from making Steve Brown was making like two hundred thousand dollars a year and when he goes from making $200,000 to $1.2 million every year, do you think he's happy to pay me every month to help him do that and give him the tools? He does it. I don't do it. But do you think he's happy to have the tools for him to execute and get vision over his business to be able to execute that from somebody that does a million and goes from making $30,000 to $200,000? Do you think they're happy to pay for $399 software every month? So what I'm doing is I'm putting my money where my mouth is and I'm giving you me, I, it's not gonna be this intense every day, all right? I was a little bit intense today because I was angry about all the haters on, on Facebook, right? But I'm gonna be teaching you every day. And right now I'm going live twice a day with a group of restaurant owners. That group, one of the groups started September 1st and they're about to finish up. And the other group started October 1st. I just showed you books during this for somebody that started with me on October 1st. QuickBooks can't do that. No other system can do that, right? And it's not just about the books. It's about the whole management system from manager logs to checklists to recipe costing and setting up your inventory and doing all these things to help you. I'm giving you me Monday through Friday. I'm not getting choked up oh, a little bit, but I am literally choking. You get me Monday through Friday going live and, 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 and teaching you all this stuff in detail. And the reason I made it 60 days is it's not easy, but we make it easier for you to execute. If you're worried about the homework, you have to do this stuff anyways. I just make it easier to do your homework, right? If you're worried about, oh, I don't have the time to meet with you every day. Guess what? I understand you're a restaurant owner. I'm a restaurant owner. I've been a restaurant owner since, since 2003, and I've been in the business since 90, 1988. I understand it. God, I sound old. I understand you, right? So I know you can't make every meeting. That's why we record it and we put it in. And then we send a summary of what was learned in there and what you can be doing every day. And you can grab the recordings and do it on your own time because I understand you're a busy restaurant owner. But to the people that are prepared to come in, I'm doing your stuff live and I'm helping you with all this for zero dollars. For all you haters out there, maybe go ask a realtor to work with you every day for 60 days for two hours. See what he tells you. That was the advice from last night. Okay. All right. I am giving away a ton of my time. And because I'm giving away so much of my time, you have to interview to be in. We're not just going to let you just join by clicking a button and joining because you won't respect what we're giving you, right? So comment 60 days and we will, we will message you and we'll set up a time for you to interview because I want to fulfill my promise. One, I got to see for me that we can help you. And if, we, if I help somebody doing 80,000 with a $25,000 a month rent, or you negotiate to 17, $80,000, 17K a month, and to get them profitable, I can get anybody profitable, 
right? If it's hopeless, I did tell somebody, um, I have told somebody uh, to close their restaurant because I knew it was, I knew it was crazy. And that they were just blowing money and they needed to close it. And it was cheaper to close it than to actually do it. They would, they would lose too much money and getting, and they're on pause until they find a better location. I promise to be honest with you. I'm not, I'm not interested in, in, in just taking money from people, right? People come and pay you for your food and they're, and they're happy to do it because you make their lives better. You give them enjoyment and, and escape. Exchanging money is not an evil thing, everyone. That's for the haters out there. But I'm I'm going to prove to you. Now, here's what's happened. In the 60 days that people got into the 20% profit, some have, right? Most people are saving 10 points just in that first 60 days. So if 10 points in 60 days sounds pretty cool, it might be worth spending some time with me every day, right? And you might get sick of me a little bit, but I promise to give you every bit of my heart and soul to make you better. To find you those profits, to, to do your budgets with you, to, to get your recipe costing cards in. And guess what? I'm going to give you invoicing. You won't have to do any invoicing. I have an app that you can take a picture and your invoices get done automatically. It's like magic. They're done the next day, right? It's just automatic. We don't have, you know. No, but through people and a combination of technology and people, we process your, and I'm giving you that. At the end of it, you don't have to pay for invoicing. My basic software is $3.99 a month. If you add invoicing, it's $6.99. If you don't want to look at any of it and you want me to do your books and have it all done, it's $6.99. You get, even if you do it yourself, you get my accounting software for now. I will charge for it in the future. I'm giving you it, giving it to you, right? If you don't have books, you better be doing this. If your books are three, six months behind, two months behind, you better be doing this, all right? So um, we're here to serve you well. Comment 60 days. Angie, thank you so much. I'll be honored to serve you. I'd love, to, and here's what's really cool. The people that I'm spending these 60 days with, we're becoming friends and I care about you and I'm helping them. There's been tears. There's, um, there's, there's heartbreak, there's difficult situations that we deal with, there's cancer, there's not being able to make payroll, there's all these difficult things, there's not being able to hire people and working through how we hire people, there's feeling like it's impossible and getting over those barriers, we do so much in these 60 days, and you know, my clients, I, I, I'm invested in, I am committed to revolutionizing the restaurant industry. And I don't know how I can prove it anymore by giving you my time and effort before this. That's why I was jumping on late. I've, I've already done two sessions with my September and October groups before we got on today, plus other people that I'm coaching and helping. Right. But as CEO, I have a whole team of people to help and it's freed me up to just go right to you and help you. Because I find, just like we experienced last night as I announced, announced the 60-day program in, the, in that Facebook group last night, the haters came out. And I'm giving away 60 days because they don't believe it's true. They're like, oh, this guy's a charlatan. I know what I'm talking about. Do I know everything? No. But I'm good at making restaurant owners rich. And I'll do it for free for 60 days for you to prove it to you. Okay? I don't know what else I can say with that. Is there any more questions before we sign off? All right, we are here to serve you well. Um, I'm a chef. You know, I can be a little bit intense sometimes, but I will not care. I will care more about you than, than most people will, right? Next to your family, I will invest every bit of effort I can into making you successful. The restaurant business is very hard and we're going to make you successful. We're going to help you make yourself successful. That's a better way of saying it. All right, anybody else? Any questions? We're good. All right, thank you, everybody. I'm honored I'm honored to serve you